Greetings YouTube, this is Mike Kaylee 7 Coming to you on this, uh, I don't know what day it is anymore. It's in July. Ah, I think today's the 13th actually, July 13th. It's a Monday. And uh, for the first time in a long time, I'm actually going to work. I have a meeting at 11 to uh, try figuring out how our teachers are going to teach uh, half the class in the room and the other half of the class online, on Teams. So, we'll see. So what's going on? Well, I would like to do a shout out to uh, Harley Day Rider, Bodine 52, and Bronco Ride. I was watching their Sunday night fireside chat with Pete's 1800. Great video. It's nice to watch that when you're doing stuff. You can kind of, it's like a radio show. It's nice. And uh, thank you to you guys for giving me an idea for today. Uh, Pete's 1800, if you didn't know, Pete, he rides a uh, 2018 Honda Goldwing uh, six-speed. I think it's a Tour six-speed, and uh, it's just a beautiful bike. So, um, some people might ask, what's, what's your take, Mike, on the difference between the Goldwing manual and the Goldwing DCT? <clears throat> Pete did a video on it, and apparently he took some slack for it. And I don't, I don't really, I wouldn't give anybody slack for, you know, preferring a manual over a DCT, <laughs> or vice versa, whatever. But uh, I'll give you my little take on it. <clears throat> so uh, when I was first looking into this bike, first I got to blame Happy Jack because he did a video test riding one, and he said it was the best bike he'd ever ridden. And like a year later, for some reason, I just got interested in, in that video again. And that sent me down the rabbit hole. Next thing you know, I own one. That's not really Happy Jack's fault, but thank you, Happy Jack. So um, I was getting into this. And let me let me try one of these DCTs, see what it's about. And uh, I went to a place out in Durham. They had a, uh, a Honda Goldwing. And when I got there, I found out it was a six-speed. So I had, at the time, I was wearing my Elsinore 1000 R boots, which are almost like ATV boots. You know, they're just big, tall, and they're not very flexible this way. So I get on the bike, and I'm trying to figure out how to fit my foot into that little teeny-weeny spot where that little teeny-weeny shifter was to try to shift, you know, up the gears, down the gear, trying to figure it out. I had to put my foot in such a weird position. Didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. But I tried it. You know, I gave it a, I gave it a go. And the guy uh, that let me test ride it, he took me on a tour. Like, you know, he was leading me. So it was kind of limited. And I, I didn't like it so much because, oh, geez, all these wet leaves. Yikes. I didn't like it because it was, it was difficult to get to the shifter. I did notice that, you know, once I was able to shift it into a gear, it felt great. You know, the power was there, the whole thing. I tried sport mode, that was amazing. I'm not really awake enough for this corner, but I thought I would just do a little bit of wake up cornering on the way to work today. <laughs> so, um,. I mean, it was okay. The bike was comfortable enough, and it had all the doodads. But that six-speed just wasn't doing it for me. Because of the weird, awkward position it was in, the clutch felt very light. That was nice. But I didn't like the weird position. And I know you can get uh, things for it, you know, to make it easier for you to do it. I guess somebody even put, like, a heel shifter on them. So there are things you can do to it. 
But before I decided whether or not to abandon the idea of a gold wing, I did a little bit more research, tried to find one. At the time, I was mistaken. I thought the place that's nearest me wouldn't let you ride one unless you bought it. And that wasn't right. It's only for the, the super sport bikes. Um, and you have to go through the buying process or whatever. And then you can test ride it. And then when you're done, if you don't like it, then you, they just cancel the sale. It's, you know, to protect them from idiots. So, um, anyway, I found a, a, a DCT, you know, dual clutch transmission, automatic. And it was way out west. Granite Falls, North Carolina. So I sent a, an email to the dealership saying I'm interested in test riding this thing. I get in my Atlas to go to work and I got a call. Oh, by the way, did you notice this then? And they noticed this in the, uh, in, in the Sunday night fireside chat with the guys. They mentioned how when you get on this thing, there is no lit up in the throttle. It's not like, eh, eh, eh. it's just like, eh, eh, eh. so when you when you crank on this, and that was tour mode. That's not even sport mode. Anyway, what is this? Ah, new new subdivision. Hmm. So I'm in my Atlas, and I'm going up the driveway, and I get this call over the phone. I, yes, hello. It's it was like 7:30 in the morning. And uh, it was the dealership calling me. Hi, this is Brandy, and I saw your email and was wondering if you're interested. And I said, well, how much is it? And she told me how much it was. I'm like, I'm on my way. I'll be there in three hours. So where are you coming from? I said, south of Raleigh. She said, all right, I'll see you about 1 o'clock. Okay, fine. I can't remember exactly what time I talked to her, but it was, I think it was 1 o'clock I was supposed to be there. I got there like an hour early because I was boogieing. <laughs> you know, I was on Gemma. Gemma had the super duper. So... I boogied my butt out there. So what I did was I, I backed the car back into the garage, took Gemma, got on the bike, and went. And then you see, you see the video. You can see the video if you want to. It's uh, Mike Haley 7 did a thing. That's the name of the video. Everybody always links it in the description. I'm always lazy. Sorry. Just do a little YouTube search. Mike Haley 7. Mike Haley did a thing. Or Mike did a thing. I think you can find it that way. So I get on the, the DCT, and I was a little bit, you know, nervous. How's this going to go? I get over to the highway, getting onto the road that the dealership's off of. I cranked on that thing, and oh, my God. It was a dream. It just goes. It just goes. And then, of course, I get to the first light to take a right, and I'm sitting there with my heel, you know, and my toe and all this, trying to shift up, shift down. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm, trying, I'm clapping at a clutch that ain't there. <laughs> Laughing at myself. Even now, I sometimes do it. I go to to shift up, and I'll put my heel down. Like, what am I doing? Or I'll go to shift down, and put, you know, my toe is doing stuff. Like, stop it, Mike. So I was completely won over by this DCT. If you watch Moto Mangi up in uh, Pennsylvania, he basically says, "Don't knock it till you try it." You know, test ride it for a day. He, I think he test rode one for a couple of times. He test rode it. He, he made sure that he really liked it. I knew instantly, especially when I was able to just pick up speed so quickly and so effortlessly. The thing about the DCT that I really enjoy is that it lets me focus on other things. My line in the corner. Um the scenery, moto vlogging. There's so many other things that, that I now can, can devote more energy to than having to worry about the timing of the shift and all that. And, you know, I, I had been doing it for 14 years at that point when I changed over. So it's not like I was new to clutching. 
but every once in a while, like, I'll give you an example. On Gemma, when I really got on it, like, if I went from first gear, full throttle, and went to gear up to second, it would never do it. It would always go into neutral. I don't know why it did that, but every time I would go full throttle first gear, I would pull in the clutch, kick it into second, let the clutch out, the bike would go into neutral. Every time. And I was slamming my heel down, making sure that's fucking second gear. Pardon my French. Nope, it would, it would go into neutral. Only when I did that full throttle thing. That was aggravating. So I had to wait. I had to, you know, go medium throttle, second gear, and then kick into full throttle. And I was fine from that point on, but that was annoying. There were a couple times I screwed up. You know, I was trying to pass somebody. So I geared down. And I went to gear down one more time to, to speed up even more, and I ended up gearing. I'm sorry, I wanted to gear up. That was what it was. I geared down. I'm in the middle of the pass. And now my tack is getting high. So I, you know, I go to gear up, and I gear down again by accident. So it's like, uh, 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 not good. Finding neutral sometimes was a pain in the butt. I always did it by heel, because I had the heel shifter. And I learned how to heel into neutral. But every once in a while you couldn't find it. Or when you're in heavy traffic and the stop and go stuff and you're constantly on that clutch and that heat's radiating up and burning your leg, which is a separate issue, I know. But now, you know, like I, on all the trips I was on last year, all the other guys are, oh my can, oh my clutch, oh da da da. And I'm just sitting there like da 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 da, just talking. And they're, they're kind of smirking at me like, are you doing that on purpose? Doing what on purpose? Are you, you know, waving your hand around, not using your clutch on purpose? Like, no, I just, I don't need to use the clutch anymore. I can go to a full stop and then start back up again with never touching the left side handlebar. Wonderful. And, you know, people say it's, it's a glorified moped or it's a glorified scooter. You know, say what you will, but... You know, I don't know of any mopeds that go, uh, any stock mopeds that go from 0 to 60 in like 3.9 seconds. Or can go through the twisties like I did on the back of the Dragon that time. Or the, the road to Hawk's Nest. Man, that was a great run. I mean, I did do a little bit of illegal stuff. I apologize for that. But uh, I just I just needed to make sure I was getting it. You know what I mean? Anyway, if you like the manual, that's fine. It makes you feel more connected to the bike, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Same thing with manual cars. I remember when when I was coming up, you know, manual was still... There were a lot of manuals out there when I was a kid. And uh, my sister, for years, she drove nothing but manual. Up until about maybe, I don't know, five, ten years ago, not even. She just preferred them. Made her feel more more in tune with it. And back then, automatics were not quite as good as they are now with the computers and stuff. So you could actually drive better. You could be faster, whatever, more responsive with an automatic. I mean, sorry, with a standard than you could with an automatic. Now, mm -mm. now the automatics are better than the standards. That's why in NASCAR, this is what they tell me, uh, in NASCAR, they're all automatics now. I don't know if that's true or not. Or paddle shift or something. So the computers now are amazing. They, they shift the bike exactly where it needs to. People always say, does it downshift when it needs to? Yes, it does. It's better than me. And it learns you. This thing actually learns how I ride. And so it, it, it anticipates my kind of shifting. After 14 years of riding with uh, you know manual transmissions on my Harleys, I don't miss it at all. It's effortless. I mean, look at me. I'm able to focus on the road. I can see who's behind me. I could do that anyway, but it's just my hand is free. I can gesticulate more. <laughs> uh, here I am at school. All right, I got to go through the COVID protocol. I'm going to take 
they're going to take my temperature and make sure I have a mask and all that jazz. All right, it's my Kaylee 7. Wishing you well. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you later.